Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Bonus Spaces webinar. Uh, today we have Miguel Martin from Granada, and he's speaking on uh, norm attaining operators between Bonus Spaces. Miguel, please. OK, so thank you, Benjamin, for inviting to, to, the, to give this seminar. Um, uh, let me start saying that this, paper, uh, this talk will be based on a paper with a joint work with uh, Hensu Choi, Yun San Choi, and Mingu Yun from South Korea. So, okay. so this is the name of the paper on quasin entertaining operator between banana spaces and we finished this last April. Okay, so uh, the roadmap of the tal will be, uh, or the tal will be not too long, and the roadmap will be the following. I will give some preliminary to, to fix the problem given the new definition. I will give the fair result on quasi non attaining operator, and then I will focus on the Radon Nicodin property, which is probably the, the, the main result of the paper. Then I will give some further result, and I will finish with some remark and open question. Okay, so uh, let me start with the preliminaries and definition. So the, the notation is will be the very useful for one spaces. So the unit ball, the unit sphere, the dual the set of bonded linear operator from X to Y, K will be the compact linear operator, and W will be the weakly compact linear operator. And maybe this is a, not completely standard, but T will be the modulus one scalar. Because my talk, uh, I mean, all the results I will give will be the same for real or complex spaces. So there is no problem with the base field here. Okay, so let's start re <coughs> uh, recalling what is the normal attaining functional and some result about them. So what is a non attaining functional? Well, it's a functional which attains the norm. The norm of a functional is a supremum. So when this supremum is a maximum, then we say that the functional attain is known. Okay, some well-known result is that uh, this is always weak star dense. This is Hambana theorem. Actually, if the space is reflexive, then all uh, functional attain the norm. This, this uh, is a consequence of Hambana theorem. And actually, this is an equivalence because if uh, this, uh, if the uh, dual coincide with the set of non attaining functionals, Jane's theorem says that the space is reflexive. Moreover, the, a very, very important theorem uh, related to non attaining functional is Bichoff Fell theorem, which says that uh, no, mo no matter which span space X you have, the set of non attaining functional is dense in the dual for everyone. Okay, so let me say that the study of non-attaining functional has many applications, and there are many problems being studied nowadays. For instance, some results related to lineability properties inside the set of non-attaining functional are currently studied. Okay, so let's go to non-attaining operator. Well, we say that an operator attains the norm if the norm, which is defined by a supremum, is attained in the sense that this is a maximum that there is a point in the unit sphere, so that t of x, point x in the unit sphere, so that t of x is equal to the norm of t. Observe that this is exactly the same, that to say that the image of the unit ball, or the image of the unit sphere is the same, intersects norm of t time s of y. Okay. Okay, let me give a few results on this. First, Linde Strauss was the first one to study the problem of density of non attaining operator prove that this set is not always dense. But for instance, it is then when the space X is reflexive or when the space Y is a uh, isometric subspace of L infinity containing the canonical copy of C0, or for instance, when Y is a polyhedral finite dimensional space. Burgain give a very, very important result in the field, uh, proving that if X has the Rodon Nicodin property, then the set of non-retaining uh, operator from X to Y is then for every Y. Then actually he, gi he, give a, or he gave sorry, a, a kind of converse with what's refined by half, who proved that if X fail the RMP, then they are, they are seek X1 and X2 both isomorphic to X, so that the set of non-retaining operator from X1 to X2 is not dense. Okay, therefore, X has the RMP if and only if the set of non attaining operator from any renorming of X to any Y is dense. Okay, so 
on the other hand, if uh, our nor if the norotelian operator from x to uh, y1 are dense for every x and for every renorming of y, then y has the RMP. And okay, what about the converse? Is, is, is true the converse like in the case of the domain space? No, the answer is no. And it was proved by Gower, who give a, provides a banner space called usually G in order of, of Gower, so that the set of norotelian operator from G to LP is not dense for any p between one and infinity. Actually, this was improved by Maria Costa, who proved that LP can be sub substituted by any infinite dimensional strictly convex space and by L1 using different domain space. Okay, so some more results. This led proof in 1973 that the set of operators whose adjoin attain the norm is always then in the set of operator from X to Y. Um, uh, for compact operator, the situation is that for most classical banner spaces of domain, compact operator can be approximated by non attaining operator. Okay, if, if the space is reflexive, there is no problem. So this is true for CK, for L1. And uh, they used to prove that, Johnson and Wolf, and a strong form of the approximation property of X star. Um, they also proved that for isometric pre dual of L1 as a range, and for L1 as a range only in the real case compact operator can be approximated by non attaining operator. So they, in this case, they use some lesser linear cell kind of result for Y. They approximate any subspace of Y, not only by, uh, sorry, every, every finite dimensional subspace of Y by, in the case of uh, isometric pre-dual by L infinity, L infinity M. Okay, so the question was, uh, a question asked by this cell and by also by Johnson Wolf was whether this set the, the, the set of non retaining operator or the closer of the set of non retaining operator always contain the set of compact operator. That is, every compact operator can be approximated by, by non retaining operator. But the answer is no. And this was proved in 2014 that I put that there exists compact operator which cannot be approximated by non retaining operator. So, in the theory of non retaining operator, but there are many, may, may, many open problems, but Probably the main open problem which remain open by now is whether finite rank operator can be approximated by finite rank non attaining operator. Okay. Okay, so to motivate our new definition, let me go a little bit to Lichin map. Yes, right. I, I'm not going a lot on into Lichin map, but just a little bit. Right, lip zero xy for the state of Lichin map from x to y, which are zero at zero, but a convenient for for for, for not to make a not to need to make a portion, and we endow with the Lichin constant as known. Then the, the, the easiest way that we can say that a Lichin map attain the norm, what is called a strongly attain the norm, is to to ask whether there is a pair xy of different points so that the norm of xs minus fy divided by the norm of x minus y is equal to the Lichit constant of f. Well, uh, in the case of the domain, in the case that the domain space is a banner space, is a banner space, then you cannot get uh, a density of this kind of map, even if x is equal to r or y is equal to r, r. But actually, this is for for any x and for any y. This can you cannot get the approximation. Uh, you cannot always get the approximation. So what to do? I think we have two options. The first option is, well, study the problem for general metric space as X, so change the domain instead of Havana space, put another metric space, but it could be for another webinar another day. Or you can study weaker form in which a Lichin map may attain its known to see whether you get density or not. Okay, so, we, we, we go to this possibility and we go to the weakest possibility that one can imagine that what's, what's given by, uh, by Gilles, by Gilles Godefras. So, so not a tiny Lichin map toward vector. So we say that a Lichin map F, a thing is known toward a vector U in the range. If the norm of U is equal to the Lichin norm of, this, of, the, of the function, and there is a sequence of of pair of points such that when you take the <clears throat> sorry when you take the 
a slope of the function f associated to this sequence, this goes to this to this point u, which has the same norm of f. Okay, so this is rather rather <coughs> sorry, this is rather weak in some sense. Uh, but in any case, go to uh, for a give an example show, uh, showing that even with this weak notion, you can get not density. If y is a renorming of C0 with the cadet clip property, then no leaches isomorphism from C0 to y can be approximated by leaching maps which attain their known toward direction of y. So this extends a result by Linde Straub of 1963, which was given for bonded linear operator. The proof is not easy at all. Um, in word of, of Gilles, the example shows that even the grid, the grid of flexibility allowed by the nonlinearity do not always provide non-attaining object. In particular, the set of leaching maps which attain the known toward direction of, of y is not then in lip zero c zero y because this set, the set of uh, sorry, the set of uh, leaches isomorphism is open. Okay, so on the other hand, the density of this kind of map holds if the dimension of the ring is finite, for instance. Okay, so let's go to our new concept for bounded linear operator. We will say that a bounded linear operator T quasi attain is known if there exists a sequen sequence in the unit ball such that the image of the sequence converts to some Y which has the same known that the operator. And we say in this case that T quasi attain is known towards Y. Observe that this is equivalent to, to say that the closer of the image of the unit ball intersect the, uh, the norm of t times the unit sphere of y. And recall that for the, for the non-attaining operator, the equivalent was without closer. So we just plot the closer here. If we view t as a leaching map, it's the same that go for our definition. There is no difference between these two, two definitions. Okay, first remark. Of course, if an operator attains the norm, then quasi attains the norm. This is clear. But also, compact operator quasi attains the norm for free. And recall that there are uh, spaces X and Y that compact operator from X to Y that attain the norm are not the even things. But in the case of quasi attain the norm, all of them, all compact operator, quasi attain the norm without no problem. Okay, so. Positive example given by these two remarks, that, uh, that this, these two remarks will give a lot of positive example of pay X sub Y so that we get density of quasi non attaining bond linear operator, we, I will present next. But also you get a negative example as a consequence of go for example. If Y is a renumbering of C0 with the cadet clip property, then quasi non attaining bond linear operator from C0 to Y are not then in the set of bond linear operator from C0 to Y. This is because you take a linear, a linear isomorphism, it cannot be approximated, and then the set of linear isomorphism is open, so you cannot, you cannot approximate by, uh, <coughs> sorry, by quasi non attaining operator. Okay, so let's go to the first result on quasi non attaining operator. Um, uh, let, Let's remark, first remark that the set of non attaining operator is contained in the set of quasi non attaining operator. Then this gives you a lot of example, all known example where you, have, you know that the set of non attaining operator from X to Y is dense. For instance, when X has the RMP, when Y is between C0 and L infinity, when X is L1 and Y is L1, X is L1 and Y is L infinity, X is X, X plum and Y is CK, X CK and Y another CK, well, X, C, K, and Y do not contain C0. Well, there are many examples in the literature that, that you get positive example for free. Also, you can get the same kind of, you can get a lot of example also using the other remark that the compact uh, operator are uh, at quasi attain the norm for free. So if you get that all operators are compact, then all operators are quasi non attaining and in particular are things. And by P theorem, this happened when X is a subspace of LP and Y is a subspace of LR, when R is a small, a strictly smaller than P, or when X is a subspace of C0 and Y doesn't contain C0, or other cases like X is a subspace of LP, Y is a subspace of LR, 
r is smaller than p and uh, sorry or x is l1 y is l infinity and uh, if r is in between one and two mu has to be atomic if p is bigger than two mu is atomic okay so a lot of examples okay so let's go to negative example because uh, the point is that we have a new definition of non attainment and uh, in something is weak enough to get much more example of density that we get that we go for usual non attainment but also we don't want the, the, the this property to be that weak that for for all pair of operators you get you get we know a negative one negative example but we i will want to present more negative results okay so to prove more negative result i need this uh, result that uh, was given to me by Rafael Paya in a discussion on this topic is the idea is that if you have a monomorphism with quasi attained the norm then automatically uh, is not attaining why well it is the proof is very easy it's written here but it's very easy the idea is that just take a sequence and a point uh, with the same norm that the, the u with the, the same norm of the operator so that tx is going to u consider t is a monomorphism consider the inverse from tx to x but tx is closed so u is in tx and we may consider the uh, x0 which is the sorry t minus one of u and just con and just to say that x in is t minus one of t of x in and is, this is going to t minus one of u with this x0 then x0 has no one and tx0 is u so the norm of t x zero is the norm of, is the norm of u with is the norm of t and t is not a thing. Okay, then, then as a consequence, as the set of monomorphism is open, if you get a monomorphism which cannot be approximated by non-attaining operator, then it cannot be approximated by quasi non-attaining operator, and in particular, quasi non-attaining operator are not dense in the set of on the linear operator. Okay. So let's show using this result some example. The first result is extending go the for a first negative result that if x is any infinite dimensional subspace of C0 and y is a strictly convex renorming of C0, then Q and A xy is not then in the set of bonded operator from x to y. The proof is not complicated, use some uh, ideas which goes back to, to Lindestrau, really, um, just the idea that any a uh, non attaining operator from a subspace of C0 to a strictly convex Banner space has to has finite rank. Then, if uh, is Y is a strictly convex renorming, then you get an isomorphism from X to Y, and then, <coughs> sorry, sorry, no isomorphism, monomorphism from X to Y, and this monomorphism can cannot be approximated by non attaining operator. So, using this result, it cannot be approximated by quasi non attaining operator. Okay, so let's go to more negative result. Uh, we can improve our result by Johnson and Ward. They prove that uh, non attaining operator from L101 to CS from some string S is not then in the set of on the linear operator, but actually the same, uh, the same is true with Q and A because they prove that there exists a bond the linear operator T which cannot be approximated by non attaining uh, operator. But actually, you can prove that this T is a monomorphism, and then you can use this the same machinery. Okay, so for more result, oh, we can improve our result by Burgain and half, because if X is a one space without the Rodonikodin property, then we can prove that there exists X1 and X2, which are isomorphic to X, such that the set of quasi non attaining operators from X1 to X2 is not then in the set of one the linear operator from f1 to x2 and the idea is directly given by the for instance by the review of of the paper by Burgain because who have proof that if x does not have the radonical in property then there is this renorming x1 and x2 of x so that the identity operator from x1 to x2 cannot be approximated by member of of this bonded linear operator from x1 to x2 attaining their norm so this is a isomorphism and you use this result and get the negative result. Okay, so this last slice gives some 
relationship between the Radon-Nicodin property and the and the and quasi non attaining operator, but there is more more result in this line because uh, all the result previous results are negative, and I would like to present the main result of the talk with a new positive result. The results say that if uh, you you take a, a strong Radon Nicodin operator, this just means that the image of the closer of the image of the unit ball of X in Y is a RMP set. Then you can find an operator with quasi a thing it known such that on the one on the one hand that this is very close to T. So in particular, quasi non attaining operator, uh, for instance, if Y has the RMP, quasi non attaining operator from X to Y are things for every X. Okay, but you get more. You get that there is a point in the closer of the image of the unit ball, uh, which has the same saying, has the same known that the operator S, so that whenever a sequence satisfies that the known of X, S of Xn goes to the known of S, then we may find a sequence theta n of modulus one scalar, so that S of theta n Xn goes to C0. So in particular, there is a subsequent uh, so that the image goes to a rotation of this point theta zero. Okay, so let me prove this, this theorem. Um, let me say, let me say what we are going to use. So the main result, the main ingredient we will use will be the what is usually called as Burgen Stigal nonlinear optimization principle. We say that suppose you got D a bounded RMP set of a one space Y, and suppose you take phi and upper semi-continuous and bounded above function from D to R. Then the set of those functional, which uh, phi plus the real part of Y star is strongly exposed the set D, is a then G delta subset of Y star. I, I will only use that this dent. No, 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 not that this is a, uh, G, G star, the uh, G delta set. Okay, so this is well known um, optimization principle by Burgen and Stigal, and will be the main tool to, 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 to prove this theory. Okay, so let's go, let's get the proof. Okay, we will apply this Burgen and Stigal approximation principle to the set D, we will be the image of the unit ball of X, the cross R. We know that this is an RMP set, this is our uh, hypothesis, and the function will be very easy. Is just phi of y is equal to the norm of y. So you can apply, and what you get? You get the point uh, y0 in d, and you get a functional y0 star in y, with this as small as you want. Here, for, com for convenience, is the norm of y0 star is smaller than epsilon divided by the norm of t, so that phi plus the uh, real part of y0 star is strongly exposed this. But what does this mean? Okay, since D is uh, equilibrated, we can rotate, and then strongly exposed mean a little bit more. In part, it, this implies, this one, which say that the norm of Y plus the modulus of Y star zero Y is always smaller than the norm of Y zero plus the real part of Y zero star of Y zero for every Y, but even more, if Xn satisfied that the norm of Txn plus the modulus of Y zero star Txn goes to the norm of y0 plus y0 star of y0, then there is a sequence of rotation of non modulus one scalar such that t of the, uh, theta in xn goes to y0. So this is just this position, the, uh, the strongest position. Okay, so let's have define our operator s in the following way uh, s of x is tx plus y0 star tx times y0 divided by the norm of y0. And the first observation is that uh, uh, we choose this inequality here to get that the norm of s minus t is smaller than epsilon. So s is very close to t. But if you calculate the norm of s, what you get? The norm of sx is smaller than the norm of tx plus the modulus of y0 star tx. And this is smaller by this inequality one that norm of y0 plus uh, y0 star y0 for every x in the unit ball of x. Okay, so let's write this here, what we need, and get more space. Okay, write c0, just 
1 plus y0 star y0 divided by the norm of y0 times y0. So it's just a, um, sorry, a dilatation of the point y0. And observe that the norm of c0 is the norm of y0 plus y0 star of y0. Take a sequence wn in the unit ball of x, so that t of wn goes to y0, and observe that s of wn is equal to t wn plus y0 star t wn y0 divided by the norm of y0, and this converts to y0 here plus uh, this times y0, and this is exactly theta zero. What this follows? This follows that the norm of x is equal, it was smaller than this, but by this, uh, by this um, equation is exactly equal to this quantity, which is equal to the norm of c0. So in particular, s quasi attain the norm towards c0. But we want to prove more. Okay, we want to prove the second part of the theorem saying that if you take any sequence in the unit of x such, such that the norm of x xn goes to the norm of, of c, of s, sorry, we, we want this s of xn going to uh, theta zero, to a rotation of theta zero. But what we have, okay, you have this inequality here. Consider the norm of y zero plus y zero star of y zero. This is the norm of s. And by definition of, 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 of xn, or by the property of xn, this is exactly the, the limit in n of the norm of txn plus y0 star txn y0 divided by the norm of y0, which will be smaller than the norm of txn plus the modulus of this by, but, but by one. This is smaller but the norm of y0 plus y0 star of y0. But then you get all things here, equalities, and you can s you can you can use property two and you can find a sequence theta n of modulus one scalar so that t theta n c n goes to y zero. Sorry, this c n uh, this c n should be x n, sorry. And hence s theta n x n is equal to t theta in x n plus y zero t theta in x n y zero divided by the norm of y zero and this is going by using that to one plus y zero star y zero divided by the norm of y zero y zero which is exactly equal to the norm of c zero. Okay. Okay. So let's go next and give some remark on the previous theorem. So the remark is that suppose you have X and Y banner spaces and suppose you have an strong RMP operator and consider the operator with quasi attain the norm and uh, that, that the previous proof produced. Okay, so you get the point and you get, uh, uh, and you get, the, you get the point in the proof uh, Y zero and with this in the closer of the unibol of BX inside Y. And what we get first that the, <coughs> sorry, the difference between T and X is a rank one operator. So S is just a rank one, mod rank one modification of T. Okay, this will be important because if T for instance is compact, then S is compact or T is weakly compact, then X is weakly compact. In any ideal, you, you, don't, you don't go outside the ideal. Okay, what more? The image of the unit ball of S, sorry, the image of the unit ball of X by S is just, and a small perturbation of this of the image of the unit ball of x of, of of sorry of the image of the unit ball of x by t. Moreover, the closer of the image of the operator s is equal to the closer of the image of the operator t. S quasi thing is known toward a point with this of the form theta zero equal lambda y zero. And also, it is not completely obvious, but it's easy to to see from the proof that the adjoint of x attain it known at some point which actually strongly suppose the set s of b closer of s of bx at the point c0 okay these remarks are important especially this part that t minus x is a wrong one operator we will use okay so let's give many consequences of this theorem so the first consequence is that if x or y has the rmp 
then the set of, of quasi non attending operator from x to y is then in the set of boundary of linear operator from x to y. In the case of x having the RMP, we need Burgen result. It's not given by, 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 by our theory because it, it's not true that if x has the RMP, every operator from x to y is, uh, is an R, a strong RMP operator. This is false. So for x, we, we prove nothing. For x having the RMP, we prove nothing, but we, we, fortunately, we have Burgen result. But the case of y having the RMP is the new one and is false for non attaining operator. As a corollary, also, the set of uh, weakly compact operator from x to y, which quasi attain is known, is always then in the set of y, uh, weakly compact operator from x to y. Um, and we can produce some interesting example. Okay, there are many examples of pair of spaces x, y for which Q and A x, y is dense, while non attaining operator from x to y is not dense. Well, for instance, if you take LP, then there are uh, an, an space we call previously G, so that the state of non attaining operator from W to L, LP is not dense. But Q and A x LP is dense for every x. In the complex case, for instance, if you take W uh, sequence in L2, which is not in L1 and is decreasing, then the set of non attaining operator from the pre dual of the Lorentz space with uh, weight uh, W and P equal 1 to the set of Lorentz, uh, to the Lorentz space with weight W and, and P equal 1 is not dense. But Q and A is dense because D double, uh, the set of the Lorentz space with weight W and P equal one is um, RMP space. Okay, so let's go to more consequence. Probably the most interesting consequence is the characterization of the RMP that we get. It's a corollary of the theorem, we get the following. The following uh, are equivalent. It's equivalent for a one space C, that C has the RMP, that Q and A C prime Y is dent in L of C prime Y for every one space Y and every equivalent renorm in C prime of C. And that Q and A X C prime is then in L X C prime for every one space X and every equivalent renorm in C prime of C. Okay, let me give some remark on this result. First is that A if and only if B is true for non attaining operator. C implies A is true for an attaining operator. I mean, if you, if you replace Q and A by, by just in A. But A implies C is false for non attaining operator, as was shown by Gower. So, in some sense, if you, in this result, which is not true for, 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 for NA, you get the, 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 the <clears throat> properties of the domain and the properties of the ring space are not symmetric. You cannot get a, a result with this symmetric. For the domain and for the and for the range for non attaining operator, but you can get for quasi non attaining operator. Okay, so let's give more consequence. First, I, I would like to give an, a stronger property, which is actually proof in the in the uh, given in the proof of the theorem, is that the set uh, the, the concept of uniquely quasi non attaining operator. We say that T uniquely quasi attaining is known toward a direction. If whenever uh, you have xn in the unit ball of x, such that the norm of t xn goes to the norm of t, then there is a subsequent and a, and a modulus one scalar such that t xn uh, t x sigma n goes to the rotation of the this point u. Okay, so what we prove in the theorem is that if if t has is an strong radon nicotine operator then you can approximate this T by S with this uniquely quasi non attaining. But let me just say that if X or Y has the Radon Nicodin property, then this set, the set of uniquely quasi non attaining operator is dense in the set of on the linear operator. Again, for Y having the RMP, it is a consequence of our theorem. But for X having RMP is not a consequence of our theorem, but it's a consequence of a result of Burgain because Burgain not only proved that non attaining operator from Havana space with the Radon Nicodin property are dense, they prove that a strongly exposing operator, which is a very strong concept, are dense, and a strongly exposing operator are uniquely quasi non attaining 
operator. This is rather easy. Okay, so as a new corollary, let me say the following. If we say that a compact operator with quasi non the norm is then in the set of quasi non operator, we are saying nothing because all compact operators are, are quasi non -attaining. But this result is stronger. This say that uniquely quasi non attaining operator, which are compact, are then in the space of compact operator. So every compact operator can be approximated by uniquely quasi non attaining compact operator. And let me say that it is easy to, 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 to give example of compact operator with that not uniquely quasi non attaining, just the identity in a finite dimensional space. Clearly, the identity cannot be unique, uh, uniquely quasi non attaining but it's compact if, if, if the space is, is finite dimensional. Also, the set of uniquely quasi non attaining weakly compact operator in, is dense in the set of weakly, weakly compact operator. Well, another consequence which will give us, a, will give a, an important application is that, uh, suppose that the set of uniquely quasi non attaining operator is then in the set of bond linear operator. And suppose you have a set A in the unit ball of X, such that the closed compact hull of A is the good unit ball of X. Then you take the operator such that there is Y with the same norm of T and a sequence going to, so that T, X, N going, going to Y, but the sequence is taken in A, not in the good unit ball, then this set of operator is also dense in the set of uh, bond linear operator from X to Y. Why? Because if the close compact hull of A is a unit ball, then you can always can get norming sequence at here with element in A. But if you have an operator with uniquely quasi thing is known, then for any, for any norming sequence, you get that there is a subsequent going to some uh, rotation of, of you. And then you can get easily that this set is tense. Okay, so how to use this? Well, let's go back just for two minutes to the map. Recall that uh, go the first definition of non attaining Lichit map toward vector. You have a Lichit map from X to Y, we say that this attain is known toward you if the norm of u is equal to the norm of f, and there is a, a sequence of paid x n y n, so that f x n minus f y n divided by the norm of x n minus y n is going to u, which have the same norm of the norm of x. Okay, so as a consequence of our result, if y has the RMP, then Lichit math which attain the norm to our vector are dense in the set of Lichit math from x to y for every x. Okay. The proof, I, I, not, I don't want to go inside the proof, but the proof use Lichit free spaces, a linearization of Lichit map. It's not complicated because this space of Lichit map from X to Y is exactly the same that the bond linear operator from the Lichit free space on X to Y. Then you, you, as Y has the RMP, then you get that this uh, uniquely quasi non attaining operator uh, are dense. And you use the set of molecules, which are, pi of, are given by pi of this form. Uh, this, this, uh, the close combat hull of the, mole of the molecule generate the unit ball, and everything is very easy using this, this, this result. OK. So let me give some further result on quasi non attaining operator. And I will, uh, and after that, I will finish with some remark and open question that we have a lot of them. Okay, so let's characterize some property using quasi non attaining operator. We previously characterized the rodon godin property, but there are other properties that can be characterized. For instance, we would like to discuss when each of the inclusion of this chain is an equality. The, for the first, uh, when all bonded, uh, sorry, when uh, every quasi non attaining operator is actually non attaining, then for, for a one space X, it is equivalent to be reflected that the set of non attaining operator from X to Y is equal to the set of quasi non attaining operator from X to Y for every Y, or, that, or, or, or to the fact that there is this one non zero 
uh, space that this equality hold. But for this equality to be true, oh, this is more problematic and give you characterization of finite uh, dimension. For instance, if X is, uh, if X has an uh, infinite dimension, then you can always find a bondelinear operator from X to C0, which is not quasi non-attaining. Of if Y has infinite dimension, then you can get an operator from L1 to Y, which is not quasi non-attaining operator. Okay, so relationship with the adjoint operator. Okay, we say in the remark of the proof of the theorem that the, the, the adjoint of the operator that we construct is, was not attaining, but this is general. If you have a quasi not attaining operator from X to Y, then the adjoint is a not attaining operator from Y star to X star. Of course, you may ask whether these two, two, <coughs> two concepts are the same, but this is not possible to be the same because uh, this set can be not dense, but the set of operators are that the adjoint attain the norm is always dense by the result of Siedler. So these two concepts are not the same, but it is possible to give a concrete example. For instance, the identity from C0 to C0 in that way with this norm do not belong to Q, Q and A, but this adjoint belongs to non-attaining operator. Well, uh, <coughs> sorry, in the case of weakly uh, compact operator, then these two concepts are the same. If the operator is weakly compact, then it's the same to be quasi non-attaining that, that the adjoint is non-attaining. Then it, it, you can get as a consequence a new proof of the result that weakly compact operator which quasi non-attain the norm is then in the set of weakly compact operators using C3 result about the, that, that the operator said that this is true are always things. Okay, so let's try to extend Payard result and some limitation of the things of the possible extension. So the result given by Payard was if you take a, a monomorphism with this quasi non attaining, then it is actually non attaining. Well, we have two possible extensions. First, if you have a quasi non attaining operator such so that the image is closed and the kernel is not all is not zero but is proximal then still T is a non-attaining operator. But proximality is somehow a strong property. Okay. So another extension is that if T is a quasi non-attaining operator and the, uh, <coughs> sorry, and the orthogonal to the kernel of T is contained in the set of non-attaining functional, then T is a non-attaining operator. But as an interesting example, the formal identity math from Gower space G to L2 Belong, not belong to Q and A. Uh, the kernel is zero because it's, it's, a, it's the formal identity math, but T not only not, is not a non is not is not non attaining, but it cannot be approximated by non attaining operator. Or if you have an infinite dimensional reflexive space, then this, this uh, condition is for free because this is the, the good dual, but if you go to C0, there are a linear operator from X to C0, which are not non attaining. So here you need something like to put quasi non attaining as an hypothesis. Okay, so let's finish the talk with some remark and open question. Uh, first, let me try to give some analog to Lindestraut properties. So there are two very famous properties by Lindestraut related to quasi uh, to non attaining operator that they, he introduced them in the seminal paper of 1963 that uh, we say that a uh, space X has property A if non attaining operator from X to C is dense for every C. And B, if you, if you get the same, but, but uh, when Y is putting as a range, but we can say that uh, X has property quasi A if quasi non attaining operator from X to C are dense uh, for, for all C and Y has property quasi B if the set of quasi non attaining operator from W uh, to Y is then in L of W Y for every uh, W. Okay. So some isomorphic result is that X has property quasi A in every equivalent norm if and only if X has the RMP. Separable spaces, actually uh, W C G uh, spaces can be renormed to have property A and so to have property quasi A. Okay, 
Y has property quasi B in every equivalent norm if and only Y has the RMP. And this result is false for the usual linear stress property B. This is true for the usual linear stress property A, but this is false for the usual linear stress property B. And every banner space can be renal to have property B and then to have property quasi B. But we know that property quasi B is different from linear stress property B. For instance, if you take LP, LP has the RMP and then it has property quasi B, but by our example, it has not linear stress property B. But we do not know what, what happened with property A. We do not know if property quasi A actually is equivalent to property linear stress property A. And it's a good, good problem. Okay, about uniquely quasi non attaining operator. So the definition of a uniquely quasi non attaining operator is, is stronger than uh, quasi non attaining operator, but uh, it's looked to be similar. But for instance, if you just take the identity from C0 to C0, the identity, the identity never can be uniquely quasi non attaining, but it's not also not uniquely quasi non attaining, but it's not belong to the closer of uniquely quasi non attaining operator. But recall that the set of non-attaining non operator from C0 to C0 is then in the set of operator from C0 to C0. So this uniquely quasi non-attaining operator is different concept than the set of non-attaining operator. Okay, uh, we, we can prove that if Y is a locally uniform in rotang space, then every quasi non-attaining operator can be approximated by, a C, uh, by uniquely quasi non-attaining operator. Uh, no matter who is X. But a good question is whether to find other sufficient condition on X or Y to get some result like this one, that quasi non attaining operator can be approximated by uniquely quasi non attaining operator. Okay, and let me finish with a problem by Ostrowski, or a, relate, a problem related to a problem by Ostrowski. Ostrowski proved, uh, asked in 2005, whether there is six and infinite dimensional X said that all operator from X to X attain it known. Well, the only possible candidate for X to solve this problem uh, negatively are, uh, sorry, positively, are separable reflexive space without one complementary subspace with the approximation property. This is known. Okay, so we, we can ask the same question, but for quasi non attaining operator in terms of the for non attaining operator. Does the RSX infinite dimensional X such that Q and A XX is equal to the set of all operators from X to X? Well, let me give some remark on this problem. I don't know the solution, of course, but let me give some remark. If X is reflexive, the two problems are the same because Q and A and N A is the same set. But as compact operator are always quasi non attaining operator, one may think in testing spaces with very few operators. That is, a spaces for which all operators are of the form lambda identity plus compact operator. Well, you can test that, but you get the following. If you take an operator T with this of the form lambda identity plus S, a lambda is non zero and S is compact, if T belongs to quasi non attaining operator, then actually T is a non attaining operator. So uh, it's also look like, like this way is not good to, to get an example of this kind, which is not of this kind, of course. Okay, and just to finish, let me say a few words about application. So there are many applications of the study of non attaining operator or even of the density of non attaining operator, for instance, to differential equation or to many too many topics. Um, most using um, most of the application use variational principle, and some of the variational principle are actually consequent of the burgen stigal variational principle. So the question here, our main open problem or our main philosophical question is whether it is possible to find possible application of the density of Q and A, or maybe of the theorem about are uh, a strong RMP operator and uniquely quasi non attaining operator to some topics. So this is probably the main question here. Um, this is uh, the end of my talk and this is what I, want, I wanted to say.
thank you for your attention. All right, thank you so much, Miguel. That was a, that was a very nice talk. Um, we can uh, open for questions or comments. There were some comments and questions in chat, but I think they're all settled by other participants. I, I, yeah, so. I, I didn't. I didn't see. I think they're all settled. Uh, am I right? So, if you have any questions, please go ahead. Uh, hey, Miguel. Go ahead. Hi, Miguel. Yes. Uh, thank you. It Hello. was a very nice talk. Um, uh, could you I maybe uh, scroll up a couple uh, the, to the previous slide? Here. So, in this last in this last remark that you make uh, mm -hmm. about uh, uh, about compact perturbations of this, of scalars of about the scalar yeah. plus compact. So. Uh, yeah. How, how does this work with 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 the uh, Hayden Argyros uh, space? Uh, how, so 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 in in that in that so space. In that, in that space. Yeah yeah. So, so the where, where every operator is of this form, uh, scalar plus mm -hmm. compact. Mm -hmm. So so does it mean that uh, there are some operators which are not quasi norm attaining on that space or what? Um, I, I didn't check on, on this space because this is a very isometric property and so you have to, to, to know the sax norm. So I don't know exactly how to make the computation, but it means that if this space, uh, I'm, I mean, I, okay. I don't know whether compact operator from this space to this space, all of them are not attaining. No, sorry, no, they cannot be. They cannot be all of them not attaining because it is not reflexive. Oh, I see. Not all, I see. Of, them, not, not all of them can be not attaining. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. All of the form, if they are quasi not attaining, then are not attaining, and there has to be compact operator. But the result but here is not clear yeah. to be true for lambda equals zero. The proof Thank is you. not valid. Uh, <coughs> actually, about this. Uh, uh, Ostrovsky's problem. First of all, Miguel, thanks for this nice question, uh, this nice question and this nice lecture. Now, about Ostrovsky's problem, it should be close to a problem which is open as well, as far as I know, whether there exists a Banner space X, infinite dimensional, so that the space of compact operators on X is reflexive. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Because uh, if k of x is not reflexive, then you'll have a linear operator in the bidual of k of x in k of x. And then I would believe by using uh, James' theorem, you should have one operator which is not non attaining. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not absolutely sure about every detail. I will need to write things down. But I think that if a space X is such that Ostrowski's condition is satisfied, then K of X will have to be a reflexive Banner space. And now we are pretty close to this famous question whether there exists a reflexive space with a PZA property, uh, which is very much open. I mean, PZA tried very hard for this and, uh, and successfully so far. So uh, I believe there is some connections to be checked between Ostrowski's problem, reflexivity for K of X, and mm -hmm. the existence of a reflexive PZ space. Probably, probably some work of this kind is done uh, by, by Ostrowski him, uh, uh, himself. I, I'm, not, I, I'm not completely sure, but I, I think I read something about that this is also, uh, that is, uh, K of X is, uh, is not reflexive, then this cannot be, this, this cannot happen. So that you need that yes, K, yeah. K of X is reflexive. So this is what I, I think I read about this problem. But for Q and A could be a different problem because maybe X is not reflexive. Uh, yes, I, I think, uh, I don't remember now what happened, but I think that if L of X is non-reflexive, then uh, this does not happen, but I never worked on PZA space, uh, so that I never did. Thank you. 
thank you, Gil, for the for the question because it's a, a good point to, to to check also this PC problem. All right, thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? Okay, if not, thank you again, Miguel, for a beautiful talk. And uh, so um, appreciate the talk. So I'm finishing the <laughs> officially now. <laughs>